the female wolf gave birth and then kids realized they weren't wolf cubs. Wolves have one of the most complex and well-crafted social hierarchy systems. They have much less conflicts over food than other animal groups, such as lion and hyena. Wolves are amazing endurance hunters. They use a large number of prey, which is far more than the prey they don't chase. They catch the prey as soon as possible. When their prey begins to get tired, the wolves will nip at their back legs and stomach until they're exhausted and give up running. This is the time when wolves kill prey. Wolves actually live with humans. They have the essence of dogs and their subspecies of gray wolf which humans have crafted over thousands of years. After selective breeding, your pug is a gray wolf. Your old English sheepdog is a gray wolf and your German shepherd is also a gray wolf. Can you image it? He or she's a gray wolf. Wolves don't bark as much as dogs. They can bark but they prefer a classic and old school sound than barking. They howl and growl, but they don't bark often. It's one of the few things that separate dogs from wolves. Actually, these characteristics are rare, which may be attributed to the domestication method used by humans in the process of training dogs is to eat meat. A lively wolf cub ran over. It's naughty, not like a fierce wolf, but like a cute puppy. Where did this little wolf cub come from? The kids were running and screaming. It's like a monster. Why is it so obedient? Jif lives alone in a remote mountain village. His parents left early and he's very poor. He is over 40, but he is not married. In addition to planting a few fields, he worked as a forest ranger. He went around the mountain every two days because he grew up in the mountain. As a ranger, he thought it's easy. He thought this job can be done easily so he could earn extra income. Therefore, he liked this profession very much. On a winter morning, Jif walked around the mountains early in the morning. Although the snow did not reach his knees, he walked very slowly. He had to stop to catch his breath before he could move on. He suddenly heard a sound, and then he stopped to listen carefully. The sound stopped abruptly. He thought it was his hallucination. Why is there his kid? When he was about to leave, the sound appeared again. The sound came from grass in front, and the height made him vigilant. He walked over slowly and a small head poked out of the snow-covered weeds. He saw these pups shivering violently. Its voice was very weak. Jif stepped over the weeds and saw that the pups had many bite marks from other animals. There was a bone on its leg that looked like it was broken. Seeing that the little wolf cub was seriously injured, Jif couldn't bear to leave it alone. So he picked it up slowly and walked down the mountain quickly. When he got home, he found some tattered clothes and put them on the ground. Then he put the little wolf cub on them. Some villagers' children were around it with surprises. He quickly found the medicinal herbs to stop the bleeding. After grinding he applied it to the cub's injured area. The cub's leg bones were exposed, so it needed to be tied up. He went to the door and found a few wooden sticks to fix the legs of this little wolf cub. It's not a normal wolf cub. After the little wolf puppy was bandaged, it's time for dinner. Jif didn't think about cooking first but found some food for the cub. He suddenly remembered that the family dog had just given birth the other day, so he decided to try it. He abruptly got up and went to the kitchen to get a bowl. Then he headed towards the kennel. Jif told the dog he wanted some milk. He didn't care if it understood, but went straight to the milking. Then he held the milk to the cub. Kids were around the wolf cub. The cub lowered its head to stick out its tongue. It finished drinking after a while. The man said that as long as it is willing to eat, it would definitely survive. After that, the little tiger cub lived on dog's milk. 
Jif would always hang out with the wolf cub. As time passed, the wolf cub's injuries were almost healed. The man named it Sam. It has been very good for more than a year. This wolf cub grew into a majestic wolf and as time went on, it often followed Jif up the mountain. Sam frolicked in the woods with Jif. It didn't look like a wolf at all, so Jif thought it was time to let it go back to nature. The next morning, Jif took Sam to the forest. He crouched down and stroked its head, talking to it. It didn't understand, but he hoped Sam could understand that he was saying. Sam seemed to know Jif treated it differently that day and they were about to part ways. Eventually, Jif put it down and turned to go down the mountain. However, Sam was close to him and wouldn't leave until he got pissed. Sam never saw Jif angry so it was probably scared. It didn't dare to follow him. After it went to the mountain in despair, Jif continued to patrol the mountain. One day, Jif suddenly fainted on the mountain, which made him gain love. Jif was found by Dan who went up the mountain. She called Jif's name after a while. Jif woke up and Dan helped him down the mountain. Dan was very poor and she dropped out of elementary school in the third grade. In order to make a living, she could only plant her family's fields and go up the mountain to cut firewood. Since Dan helped Jif down the mountain, she has spent almost half of her time with Jif. Their interaction increased. Dan's frugality thoroughly impressed Jif. One day, Dan plucked up the courage to confess her love to him. Jif was very happy because he was also going to confess his love. Despite the opposition of Dan's family, they got married. Two years later, Jif was nearly 50 years old. Jif and Dan live happily and they have a lovely daughter. Their daughter is very well behaved and sensible, and she is willing to be with Jif all the time. People may encounter various problems in their lives. We don't know when an accident will happen. Unfortunately, Jif suddenly felt pain in his waist when he was patrolling the mountain. Before he could react, he passed out. After seeing this, Dan led Jif up the mountain. It took them nearly three hours to reach the main road. They stopped a passing car and went to the hospital. After a systematic examination, the doctor concluded that his left kidney was gradually shrinking and his right kidney had chronic atrophy. The high cost of surgery made Jif give up. After a few days of infusion in the hospital, he was discharged and went home. After that, Jif acted as if nothing happened. Even Dan felt that the medicine prescribed by the old Chinese medicine doctor worked. Three years later, Jif's condition worsened again, which made Dan even more sad. Jif's left and right kidneys were severely atrophied. But Jif said that he would feel better and have less pain after he takes a break in the forest. It's very hot in summer. That's the season when forests were prone to fires. Even if they were careful, Jif could not avoid disaster. A forest fire broke out. Jif knew something was wrong when he saw a few gleams. Thick smoke rose from the mountains not far away, and the fire spread rapidly. Jif had no time to react. The fire spread towards him with the wind. Jif ran quickly down the mountain, but he stumbled and fell down. With a bang, the wolf appeared. This scene in front of him seemed familiar. Before Jif could think of anything, he neither wanted to be eaten by this beast, nor to be burned to ashes. Therefore, Jif closed his eyes. He felt that he could not last long, so he chose to accept his fate at that time. The wolf walked up to him anxiously, grabbed his clothes and dragged him. It surprised Jif very much. Why did this wolf have such a behavior? Is there any way for human beings to survive in front of the beasts? The wolf didn't stop dragging Jif, which made Jif regain hope. His daughter and he quickly got up and ran towards the direction. 
Not long after going down the mountain, a tree trunk suddenly fell from the top of his head. Jif had no time to dodge and was crushed to the ground. After the wolf put out the flames on his body, it stood next to the burning trunk. There were obvious burn marks on its body. It took a stick from afar and gave it to Jif. He took the stick and pushed the trunk away from him. Jif thought for a while, endured the pain and continued to run down the mountain. The wolf has been leading the way. Jif finally returned home safely under the escort of the wolf. The wolf sent him down the hill. It brushed him a few times. Jif saw the long scar on the wolf's leg. This wolf was injured. Although its leg has recovered, the scar is still there. It stepped forward and shook the dust off its body, let out a long roar and walked towards the mountain. Jif was desperate. He did not want it to go back because the fire in the mountains was out of control. It's dangerous. But the wolf disappeared. When Jif came home, he was burnt and injured all over. He didn't seem to hear anything. He said that he had escaped successfully because of the wolf and he didn't do anything, but he was saved by a wolf. Jif and kids were unbelievable. This forest fire destroyed the forest. A fire can instantly reduce an entire forest to ashes. Animals, humans, and even the entire natural world are inextricably linked. Prevention of forest fire requires the joint efforts of all of us. We should create a better social environment for animals in our homes. Animals can complement humans. After a 26-month search, last night Indian police finally located and rescued little Moglai, who lost on Makasha more than two years ago. This nine-year-old boy has been found. He was sleeping with a pack of wolves in a cave in the Indian jungle. The police chief declared that they stumbled across the boy. They were actually hunting a thief in the forest, but suddenly police dogs smelled a dead animal. Dogs took them to a cave with a dead cow. At first, they thought dogs had found the thief so they entered the cave. However, they found the little boy and wolves sleeping. The officers thought the boy had been caught and wounded by wolves, so they started shooting the wolves to scatter them into the forest. The boy woke up as soon as he heard the first shot. He stood in front of the pack to protect them. The boy told polices that his name was Moglai and that wolves were completely harmless because they were his friends. He said he got lost after playing hide and seek with two friends in the forest more than two years ago. He eventually found the cave where the wolves lived. He said they didn't scare him at all. Instead, they always took him with them. They were friendly from the start. He fed himself some prey and he told polices that he befriended a bear and a panther. The boy has now been taken home by police to his parents who had lost hope since early last year. His mother is 32 years old and his father's is 35 years old. They were overwhelmed with joy. They were delighted and incredulous when they saw the chief police hold their boy in his arms. Wolves are very similar to humans in terms of social structure. They have family bonds and raise their pups until they are older. They teach pups discipline and some skills. And they are monogamous. Female wolves and female wolves play equal roles and they work together to achieve their goals. They fiercely defend their territory. Which is actually one of the reasons for their highest death rate. Wolves protect their territory from other wolves. They even have their own nannies who take care of their pups while other elders hunt which is why wolves became modern dogs. They are very intelligent. They can adapt to a variety of foods and are highly adaptable to a variety of environments. They are very flexible. When they pursue a goal, they don't give up easily. Their observation of the corpse is meticulous. An elderly man picked up a leg from a carcass and tries to swing it in front of cubs to teach hunting tactics and to avoid injury. 
they chew wood and sticks to clean debris between their teeth if they have. Their perseverance and strategy are amazing. Their fur matches the color of their environment. Their eyes are white, gray, brown, black, golden brown, green or blue and so on, depending on the species. They have various kind of characteristic. They are really beautiful and there is a certain intelligence and dignity in their eyes and their movements. I don't believe Mystic Wolf is three times stronger than a dog of the same size. As we moved toward the machine shop, he jerked me as I was prepared and braced myself against him. He dragged me brutally down the street and I had to take his rope to the mechanic shop. He wobbled like Gino did decades ago. This puppy is so cute. It can't move. I realized I was gonna go. Once I stood up with him in my arms, his chin was inches from my face. I was aware that I had an unknown creature in my arm. As I walked down the street with him in my arms, I felt his body pressing against my chest. But I had a feeling that he was different from any other animal I'd ever come into contact with, just like I said. But I don't believe in these thoughts. Though it weighs on my chest. Since I have owned some wolves and high quality wolf dogs, I have to say that they are not really pets. They are remarkable and interesting animals that can really enrich your understanding and appreciation of the natural world. But you must take responsibility and meet the requirements for keeping animals. It pushes your limits in many ways. They are also highly social animals, far more than domestic dogs. Isolating one of these animals is cruel. They need honest companions. In other words, you need to be committed to having a multiple animal household.